Welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes at the Video Workbench Studio. Uh, today I'm going to cover uh, the Hulk Dragon Vinyl Model Kit, which I have over here. Uh, the time machines that I'm working on, uh, the latest progress with them, and a few other things. So, why don't we get this started? Okay, well the first thing that I would like to discuss is the Hulk Vinyl Kit by Dragon. Uh, it's pretty much a very simple model kit. Um, it's simple in regards to how to put it together. Now if you haven't worked with vinyl before, it's actually very easy to work with. All you have to do is heat up parts in order to uh, cut them so that they fit into a uh, where they need to. Now with this kit you don't have to do any cutting. Everything's already been molded in shape so that you can actually uh, put a peg into a hole. And that's about it. That's the only way that you put this model together. Now you can also decide whether you want to glue it or not glue it. Um, the, the pegs that fit into the holes are made so that no gluing is really necessary. All you really have to do is take a hot blow dryer and uh, put it on the parts. Get them warm so that they soften up so that they can squish into the holes. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, now I did gluing. I, I glued the parts together because I want to make sure that it stays together. Uh, one thing that you have to know when gluing vinyl or gluing pretty much any type of uh, plastic together, you always want to go bare plastic to bare plastic. Uh, and with vinyl, uh, you can use any type of super glue that you wish uh, because it bonds very, very quickly, no matter what type of super glue, what type of grade of super glue you use. Um, it's, it's a very basic kit. Um, it's designed for the um, uh, beginner modeler or somebody who's never modeled before. Um, that I'm going to cover and the review of the model kit I'm going to re um, I'm going to cover in a future review. I'm going to show you what the kit looks like and then we'll get on to a few other things. Alright, I'm going to take the camera off of the tripod and we're going to take a look at the Hulk vinyl kit by Dragon. I have it on my homemade pedestal here, uh, Lazy Susan, that I created with parts at home and from at work. So why don't we take a look at the Hulk. All in all, it's a pretty simple kit. Now my client, the one who ordered this, wanted the colors to be very close to the box art. I tried the best that I could and uh, with the pictures that I've sent him he really likes it so that's great. So let me back up here. I'm gonna look at the plaque. I like to try to give the models that I make a museum like quality try to make them look a little higher end so that the client feels that they have a very nice piece that they can proudly display in their home or office. Now the base that came with the model is a plain black base. I did all the detail work and made a brand new original one of a kind base for this kit. And basically I just wanted to look like um, 
the base should have some sort of feel from the Avengers movie. Um, like it's a war-torn street, there's blasts in the street, and the asphalt has been peeled back or blown away, and it's cracked, and um, you know, it's pretty much the whole idea of the base. I wanted to have some detail to the base, more than what the client received with the model, but not make it something that would overpower the figure itself. And I went below and dirtied up his feet because, well, even though he's a superhero, superheroes, they get dirty. Try to get in here on the face. Now the challenge of this kit were the eyes. The eyes just were very small and and they were set in pretty deep. But uh, I tried the best that I could and uh, put enough detail uh, with the teeth and the mouth. Now something I did a little bit different uh, is with the hair. I don't know if you can see it here on camera but I went with a brown base, a dark brown base, and then I dry brushed black over it. And the reason why I did that is even though the Hulk's hair is known to be just straight black, I wanted to have some sort of color contrast um, go f going from lighter to dark. And uh, it gives a very nice uh, effect. So that's something to think about sometimes. And then I did the same thing with the eyebrows, where it's a, a brown base coat and a black uh, dry brushed overcoat. So I think I got pretty close to the box art. Now also the client had uh, mentioned that they wanted the pants to be more purple. Now, the box art, it's like a really, really light purple, and he wanted something a little bit darker, pretty much like the traditional purple that we've all come to know and love with the Incredible Hulk. And I like calling him the Incredible Hulk. People call him the Hulk, whatever, but, um, you know, it is what it is. He's a comic book hero and has had many names, so, um, and actually many colors, too, because there's a gray and a red Hulk, too. So that's it for the Hulk. And uh, a video review will follow uh, in the coming weeks. Okay, next up is the Masterpiece Model Time Machine Projects. Yes, projects. I've mentioned it before that I'm working on in the uh, last behind the scenes. Um, that I'm working on three Masterpiece Model Time Machines. Now, uh, the kit itself... Uh, I'm sure I mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again. And actually, Steve Neal uh, has done one of these just recently. Um, and he mentions that um, and shows that it is a difficult kit to work with. Now, I'm not saying that it's a bad kit at all. It's, it's not a bad kit, uh, but it's for very advanced modelers. And with uh, the three that I'm working with, two of which are going to be um, animated. They're going to have lights. The disc in the back is going to spin around. And um, you know, the lights are going to blink. And uh, it's going to be a, a pretty, pretty neat model. Two of them are like that. Um, and one is going to be a static kit. Uh, the reason why they take so long to build, one, I do have a day job, so that takes a lot of my time, and plus I have a family, so I try to split up my work um, between um, work, family, filming, and model building. And, you know, I try to balance all of that and do what I can. Now, uh, these kits are full-on resin. 
and uh, there's some multimedia in there as far as uh, some of the different smaller parts. But uh, what I'm going to show you today is what I have done the last time I had um, given the uh, behind the scenes tour of the Video Workbench Studio. I went over to the other bench where uh, it's a staging bench basically and a lot of the cutting is done. And let me tell you, there is a ton of cutting that has to be done with the time machines, especially with the chairs, um, because of the way the molds are made and how the resin is poured in because of the molds. And there's very large chunks of resin, and it just takes a lot of time, and you have to be careful, otherwise you're going to cut right into a part. And, you know, with resin, or with any plastic model kit, you know, once you cut away too much, then sometimes uh, you can't repair it. So you have to be very, very careful. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, what I have currently done uh, that I didn't show in the in the past video, in the last one, and uh, show what I, I still need to do. So why don't we take a look at the video workbench version of the time machines. Three of them. Put the Hulk off to the side and now we're looking at parts of well three time machines so there's a lot there that's what the completed time machine is supposed to look like and right here we have uh, the side rails which are right there actually those are the the um, horizontal rails that go around the perimeter of the time machine. And then we have six of the other rails. As you can see here, everything that I'm showing you is in gold. And those rails go all the way from the front to the back. Pretty much connecting the console to the generator. Now there are wires that go inside of the rails here so that there's a connection between the console and the generator. Now there's the lever that's here, the time key, and that gets pulled down or pushed up. Pulling it down makes it stop or go slow and pushing it up slowly will get the disc to spin and the lights to blink. And here are parts to smaller parts to six time machines. And as you can see here these are also gold. And pretty much um, I airbrushed Model Master Gold on them and uh, then several coats of Future Floor Wax. And Future Floor Wax is very, very good for um, sealing in colors. I really, really highly recommend using Future Floor Wax on a lot of your models. Even on a model such as the Hulk, you can use Future Floor Wax and then put um, a dull coat over it. Now, I didn't use Future on him. I just used several dull coats on him. But uh, with Future, if you can get your hands on it, uh, it will seal in your colors with a not a real thick acrylic um, overcoat, but almost a resistant acrylic overcoat. And uh, where do I have it? Let's see here. Uh, as you can see here, I have other time machines of the parts that I showed in my last video. And here you go. Future Floor Wax. And uh, this stuff is made so that uh, people can walk on it. You know, it's got to be durable. And uh, to tell you the truth, I highly recommend it. It is very, very durable and uh, will seal in colors. You just have to make sure that when you run it through an airbrush, that's pretty much, you could paint it on too, but I highly suggest using an airbrush. Um, it atomizes it so much 
that uh, it can run. So you have to make sure, because it's very thin, and you do not have to dilute it with water. You can if you want, but uh, I don't. I don't dilute it at all. So I run it through an airbrush, and you have to make sure that afterwards, when, after you're done, that you do clean out your airbrush thoroughly. Otherwise, it'll lock it up, because this stuff becomes hard as a rock. So uh, on, I would use it on, on anything and everything that you could. Use future flow, floor wax. <laughs> and um, it, for me, it's the best sealer around. And then if it's too shiny, which it probably will be, Use dull coat over it. Alright, let's get back to what I have done here. Now all these parts here, they go on the generator and on the ball that's above the generator. I'll show you where those go. Right here, you have three on each side. Actually, you have six on each side. You have three on the top and you have three on the bottom on the generator. The cages, they still have to be made. I'm going to make those out of um, really thin sprue. Because you can actually make them with a wire, and Masterpiece Models does provide the wire, but it's really difficult to um, actually uh, f make the form that goes over the LED lights. Now this cage is a lot bigger than these cages here, so that presents a, a bit of a challenge. And then I have these parts here primed and with white on them, and these are going to be for the static version. I just have to pick the best three out of here uh, to make a green, red, and yellow light that will go right on top of the console. And that's it for the time machines. Uh, they're coming along, but like I said, there's a lot of work that has to be done with these. And um, I'm glad that I'm able to work on these. Eventually, I hope to get one for myself, because now that these are number four, five, and six that I'm working on, you know, I'm really getting to know the um, the kit. And um, you know, hopefully, I can have one for myself, because I, I love the movie and I really like this kit. Um, over here, I still need to put on graphics, and I need to put on two of the chairs. I need, uh, um, I'm going to make them look like real upholstery. So I'm going to hopefully be able to show that in a future video, how I go about flocking, as it's called, uh, flocking the chairs so that they look real. Also, the... Um, Footrest here is going to get flocked also. So that's gonna it's gonna look fuzzy, it look like carpeting. So these kits um they do take a while to make, that's for sure, because they're you know, like I said, I have three of them, so and I'm trying to make them the best that I can and as accurate as I can. Because these um these parts here, there's um there's actually there's two parts here. It's not one complete part, and there's a lot of sanding that has to be done. Okay, well, a, uh, another thing that I'd like to mention is that I just ordered an engineer bust from a guy in Thailand uh, who goes by the name of, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, the first name is uh, Apkit L Highway. And uh, he does a great, great job at sculpting. And he has an engineer kit. I haven't done a kit for myself in quite a while. <laughs> I've been working on, um, I've been working, uh, uh, working with the family, you know, and having all the family together time um, and doing work for, for other clients. And I haven't done a kit for myself in quite a while quite a while. It's actually been years since I've done my own kit. And I was going to do a kit that I have here. Actually, I was going to do the um, 1990 version, the 90s version of uh, the Horizon Models Batman. But my wife, Deanna, had said, well, why don't you do something different? Do something that you haven't done before. Because I've built a few of those for clients. 
Um, and I just kind of wanted to do something for myself, and I really love that sculpt, our sculpt. Um, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to spend a little bit of money on myself, because a lot of the money that I make, you know, of course, goes either for the family or for my video workbench business, and I spend very little on myself. So I decided to get this kit. So when I get that kit, I'm going to review it, uh, I'm going to build it, and tell you what I think of it. But uh, what I've seen of it so far, <laughs> it looks great. Um, so more on that in the future. That's it for this behind the scenes in the Video Workbench Studio. Uh, I hope to do another one soon. Uh, I do want to let you know that it's not going to be a regular thing. I will get to them when I can, when time allows. Uh, I have other things that I'm doing with the videos and I'm going to get really hard into getting these time machines done. My clients have been waiting. Uh, there were other commissions that I, I had to do beforehand and sometimes there's commissions that pop up uh, during. And the reason why I may do a uh, commission during is because there's so much work that needs to be done with these time machines. Like I've said before, there's a lot of work and I just need to get away from them uh, because they can be overwhelming. There's a lot of work there. So, um, you know, I sneak in another commission that I know that I can get done rather quickly. And this Hulk one I got done within a few weeks and, um, you know, that's that. So I'm going to work really hard to get these time machines done. Thank you to my clients for being great clients and being very, very patient. I greatly appreciate that and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed another behind the scenes with the video workbench in the video workbench workshop and with me Jason Garris I hope to see you soon